Isn't this exciting? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, with our nice shiny new layout and everything like that. It's very, very cool. Very good. Um, awesome. Well, shall, shall I begin? Shall we start? Hell yeah. Starting the stream Let's do it. The part that I'm, I'm still not so sure with. So yeah, okay. it's always a bit uh, weird. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll go for it. We'll go for go it. Go on. Um, so, hi. Uh, my name's Luke. I am going to be the GM of today's game. We are playing uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound, which is the role-playing game from Cubicle 7. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I have a few notices that I have to say before we get started with this game. Uh, first of all, this is a fan game and is in no way officially affiliated with Cubicle 7 or with Games Workshop. We are going to be playing an adventure today which is based on Faltering Light, uh, which is the starter set adventure for the Soulbound role-playing game. If you are at all interested, I would definitely recommend picking this uh, starter set up, partly because it has the best inside of a box I've ever seen in any role-playing game, but also because it's a lot of fun, as we will as we will see as we're going through. Um, we are also going to be using some maps uh, from uh, ZPQ uh, and from Epic Isometric. Uh, you can find both of those on Patreon. Um, so, before we begin uh, fully, um, if all of the characters, all of the uh, all of the players, I should say, would like to introduce themselves, uh, just your just your players, just your name, your who you actually are in real life, um, uh, and then we'll do character introductions a little bit later. Um, so, on the screen, should we start left to right? So we'll start off with Toki, all the way on the the far side. Hello, I'm Toki. Uh, if you're watching on here, there's a 50-50 chance you've seen me before. If not, welcome. Um, yeah. Uh, Ian Pronouns, as seen there. And yeah, I, I do video gaming and stuff, and we'll see how this goes tonight. <laughs> Go on, Sophie. Uh, Sophie's next, yeah. Hello, um, I'm Sophie. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and... Um, oh, I was about to say who I'm playing, but we'll introduce our characters later. Um, but yeah, later. it's excited to be here. <laughs> uh, I'm Luke, I mentioned it earlier. We'll pass straight over to Emma <laughs> on my right. Hi, I'm Emma. I also use she, her pronouns, and I am super excited to get playing this adventure. Hi, I'm Ariana. I use she, her pronouns. With that, let's get cracking. <laughs> uh, here we go. The light breaks over the city of Brightspear. You sit in one of the ambassador's chambers on the upper tier, a constantly revolving disc that houses the city's rulers, nobles, and many of the Stormcast Eternals. Most cities of Sigmar are ruled by a conclave formed of representatives of the city's residents. However, the conclave of Brightspear has only just been elected when the Necroquate struck. This realm-spanning event tore undead from their graves and sent them forth as howling revenants and chain-rattling wraiths. The conclave was slain and a temporary regency was appointed. Solania Gravewing of the Celestial Warbringer's Stormcast Sacrosanct Chamber now governs in what would rightly be called martial law. It has been three weeks since you acted as the bodyguard for Jacob Bugmanson, and now your handler, Lord Castellan Xenius, accompanies you onto a Dwarden gyrocopter that ducks and dives throughout the tall towers and leads towards the beacon of Brightspear, a huge central tower around which nine globes hover, attached as a colossal orrery. So, you are all sitting within this gyrocopter, this whirring machinery of Dwardian technology. And I'd like to tell everyone what characters we have got in front of us. The character that I mentioned uh, just now, Lord Castellan Xenius, um, has been uh, your handler um, while you have been within uh, Brightspear. Uh, they look a little bit like this, kind of stern, icy, icy green eyes. Um, and now uh, let's introduce uh, who would like to go first introducing their character? Should we do left to right again? Let's go left to right again. On the far side. Who have got? Toki. I'm Dendril. Um, 
Not sure what to say about myself, really. Not much of a speaker. Um, more of a hunter. And, um, yeah. I'm starting to like these people. Probably. Namis is Namis is next. Mm -hmm. uh, Namis is a. I just in my head, I just think of her as a terrifying person. <laughs> um, she's very imposing, very tall. Um, she is a darkling sorcerer, um, and until recently was the head of a um, coven of um, of witch elves. Um, and uh yeah is no longer that and is quite angry about it excellent excellent and then we go to our pirate uh so uh those of you who joined in last time uh if you are here again uh you might remember that i played a stormcast eternal called Rayless Averbound. uh she has moved on to bigger and better things uh and we are joined now instead uh, by uh, uh, Rosalia or Raz uh, Wave Rider. Um, she is a, a Black Art Corsair, um, very piratey, very uh, just sort of very, very open with, with other people. I feel like, as, a, as maybe as a contrast to some, some other people who might be quite reserved, but uh, Raz, uh, Raz is very forthcoming. <laughs> Excellent. And finally. Hello, I'm Tidemaster the Tidecaster, and I'm sideways? You're not sideways anymore. No, you're not. Am I not sideways anymore? Not anymore. <laughs> Has... Okay, good. I'm not sideways anymore, then. <laughs> <laughs> I am an Ideneth Deepkin Tidecaster. Um... I've come to the surface world, and I rather enjoy it here. Um, I'm a very powerful sorcerer, and I use it, um, to enjoy the world as best I can. Excellent, excellent. So, as you are flying over the, the city, um, and heading towards the Spear of Heaven, what is it that your characters are kind of, um, what are you thinking about as you are on this journey? You're looking back over the city of Bright Spear. Some of you have been here for a while, and some of you have only uh, arrived fairly recently. Um, what's going through your through your heads at the moment? Dendrail is thinking that from the sort of side of this ship, it's got a very very good vantage point over the city. If he needed to uh, whip his bow out. Definitely, yeah. So from the very top, you can see the the sort of upper plate of the uh, of the city is kind of very slowly rotating, um, and underneath it, that's where, as I said, that's where the the rich rulers and and the upper classes live, as well as the stormcast eternals. And then underneath it, you have this far more expansive um, sort of lower class area, um, as well as some areas that are basically directly underneath the the upper tier, which means they essentially never see light but from here you can see right the way to, to the edges of the sea um, and the wastes beyond the top of it any other thoughts as we progress over the over the city raz is a sort of leaning back she's quite casual uh but i think inside she's thinking like this is quite a new binding for her she obviously wasn't present on the last mission mm -hmm. um so like knows Tidemaster like reason like well enough that we've kind of got travel together for a bit but the other two I think she's still sort of jury's still out. Tidemaster's just like leaning against the wall and he's like I've been more high. Now when you say high <laughs> Yeah <laughs> in all possible definitions. Uh... I think I think novice looks uh quite angry she always looks quite angry but she looks mm -hmm. particularly angry now doesn't mean she necessarily feels angry but she knows bright spear quite well and there's quite a lot tied up in this city and so from the outside she looks very thoughtful and angry 
She's got resting witch face. Yeah. Resting witch <laughs> face. Yeah, that, was that was a really bad time to take a drink. That was such a bad time to take a drink. <laughs> oh, we're starting strong. We're starting <laughs> strong. Here we go. So, eventually, as the gyrocopter spirals its way throughout the city, it lands with a bump on a raised platform in the shadow of the Spear of Heaven. This gigantic tower stretches from the storm-wracked heavens above and seems to plunge all the way down into the depths of the city below. A huge fortress has been built around the spear, a number of Stormcast Eternals guard it. Without a word, you see Xenius step forth from the gyrocaptor and beckons for you to follow. Xenius makes their way across and towards the spire. What would you all like to do? Yeah, Russ like saunters after him. Mm -hmm. She's confident. She knows what she's about. Mm -hmm. Seeing this, Dendril's just going to follow behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Namus follows them as well. Tide, Tide Master also follows. Cool. Cool. And um, as Xenius makes their way across uh, the square, it, you see a whole menagerie of different people. There are there are ambassadors, there are warriors, there are there are stormcast, um, all all scattered around, going about their business. It's a very um very uh, important area. Uh, it's one that you've probably not been in um before. And Xenius, uh, they lead you to a large set of uh, ornate double doors, um, and stand to the side. Uh, indicating that you go in, but Xenius themselves does not follow. They say, it appears that you have drawn some interesting attention, some admirers, if you will. Solania Gravewing, the <coughs> commander, uh, Lord Arcanum of this city, has requested your presence personally. On hearing that we've attracted attention, uh, Dendrail is going to force of habit immediately scan the crowd and see if anyone has just stopped and watching what we're doing. Okay. Could you give me a... Woohoo, we're going to have our first check. Um, I believe this is going to be an awareness mind check. Uh, for one, please. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> so... that is poor. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, uh, I guess we'll have to narrate it because I noticed that part is not on the Twitch uh, screen necessarily. That is no um, successes, correct? N not one. No difficult to tell. I think um, maybe in the in the moment, um, there doesn't appear to be a lot specifically changed around you. Um, but to be fair, considering the, the crowd of Stormcast and uh, ambassadors and high class uh, folks standing around, you do stand out a little bit as a, as a group of four. I hope you don't mind me uh, mind me saying. Yeah. Uh, that would be failing if we didn't stand out. Basically, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. Dendra's probably... Master aims for flamboyance, so... Yeah, Dendra's probably a bit distracted by everything that's going on being so new to him. To properly, like, scan the crowd. Excellent. Okay, so are we heading inside? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Cool. You. you walk out into this. Who's going first? That's a good question. And how are you striding into this hall? This hall, which is uh, a, a a huge, ornate, wonderful creation of the Stormcast Eternal. Dendrail's like ten foot three, so knowing he's very tall, he'll go to the back so other people can mm -hmm. see. I will say, for, for me, is, we have an incredibly tall party. Virtually everyone is like <laughs> yeah. over six five or something. I can't. I don't know how that worked out, but I like it anyway. Yeah, it's a. We yeah, all we... well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm still quite short for my race. <laughs> no, yeah, you are. You're a little, you're a little shrub. <laughs> oh. Trouble. I think I think that Namis, um, while she's a very imposing figure. Uh, is also quite well suited to the shadow, so generally kind of sticks to the back with Dendril as well in these kind of situations. Just listening, watching. I feel like Tidemaster and Raz being the ragtag, flamboyant 
duo <laughs> that we are are just like destroyed. Let's, yeah, let's go, bitches. <laughs> like, like there's almost a little bit of competition. Like, there's all. It's almost like who's the most fun boy in. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Okay. And we constantly battling it out, but it's friendly. Aww. <laughs> <I like> it. <laughs> so you're you're striding in, you're you're making your grand entrance, uh, literally. Um, and what you see is this huge long hall. The floor of the hall is this intricate pattern of multicolored marble tires, which uh, swirl with a sinuous design, which is actually a little bit unsettling on the eye. At the very far end, you see. The person that has requested your presence. The um they are the Lord Arcanum, uh Slania Gravewing, um, the the regent of the city, for want of a better term. Um, and she's standing at a table, um, uh, surrounded by a couple of different um uh, uh of her council, essentially, and she is looking at on this table there is a sort of dark wooden frame. And there are these um, tiny, like, um, almost appear to be miniatures of ash, uh, magical ash, that seem to be appearing and then disappearing. You see in these in these stands, uh, Zinchian demons and Stormcast Eternals. As you approach, Gravewind turns and looks back to you and says, Ha! Ah, here you are. Thank you for coming. The war here is not going well. There are agents of Zinch everywhere, perhaps even in some of the highest positions in our city. Our warriors are spread thin and the city has little wealth to hire more mercenaries, but there may be hope if we can believe in legend. We believe in certain stories regarding the Spear of Heaven. My colleague here should be able to give you more information. She uh, indicates to her right, and almost um, sort of melting forth out of the shadows, you see a um, quite, quite comparative to all of you, quite sort, short statured human man. Um, he is wearing a long waxed leather coat and a wide brimmed hat with a, uh, a twin-tailed comet pin, which usually marks one out as a witch hunter. Gravewing says, this is Einrich Duquesne. He is our representative from the Order of Azir. He is here because he believes that there is a traitor in our midst. Duquesne knows more about the forces of chaos than any other mortal here. He will explain to you your charge should you choose to accept it are there any sort of chairs arranged around this table or are we just sort of just milling about uh i think they are probably they're probably standing up but i think there probably is a set of a set of like almost throne like chairs just behind out out of character i'm really really cold i'm gonna go get some socks <laughs> that's fine. Um, I that's really fine. want to count that as in character. I would love that to be a moment. Yeah, well. that, that's now canon. That's yeah, now yeah, canon. I like that. I, like that. Right. Right, so I think that... Duquesne, do you have any socks? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that Namus, uh, when uh, she caught sight of the witch hunter pin is a bit more wary of this person okay. now it's like could you give me a um a i'm gonna say it's a law mind check um five one Nice. Okay. That's Way better than I did. There. That's good. So, um, you probably would be on edge a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, the good news is that um, in the context of the, the Order of Azir, at least, um, witch hunters, are they tend to more focus on 
the magic that takes place um, outside the realms of order. So really their focus is more on chaos magic, uh, potentially on death magic and, and things like that. Um, pop, you're probably not out of the woods necessarily, um, but he's probably uh, not here for you directly. That's fine. Just someone to keep an eye on. Okay. So, Ira Heinrich looks at all of you and says, You all did an excellent job looking after Bugmanson. That was impressive work for all of you. Uh, and Raz just sort of like looks at the ground, like scratches his head and like feels a little bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Side eyes emoji. <laughs> although I notice one of your party was conspicuously absent from the arrangement, though I'm sure nothing untoward as a result. I was very impressed. How did you find your first expedition? We killed a lot of people. Hmm. I thought the teamwork was great, if I'm being honest here. You know, I thought we, as a four, myself included, were excellent working together. And I would highly recommend working with these people a second time. <laughs> oh, quit your games, Raz. We all know you weren't there. <laughs> Listen, I was... I, if I was... If I'm not an emotional support pirate, then what am I? You know, I just... Quite right. I must warn you, though. You have effectively dealt with greenskins and drunken orcs, but the likes of which we will be encountering today is of darker climes. Have any of you experienced fighting the beasts of chaos? I feel like I have. Once or twice, but it has been a long time. My ex was a little bit chaotic. I don't know if that's where you're coming at here, or... Um, could you give me an intuition mind check 6-1, please, Raz? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, um... No, you failed. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that tracks. Um, <laughs> I think the the your 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 attitude is perhaps more irritating than concerning, which I guess is probably a good thing uh, when you're talking to a witch hunter. Um, and Decane says, "Come, our enemy is insidious, but we do have something of an advantage. Follow me." And he takes you to a what is essentially a, a huge lift, essentially. Um, opens the door and uh, ushers you inside. In this huge uh, glass elevator, essentially, suspended hundreds of feet above, you can see a huge white crystal. It's the very, very top of the Spear of Heaven. Decane says, well... Not so shiny right now. This is the Breacon of Brightspear. Centuries ago, it did indeed burn brightly, keeping the enemies of the city at bay and providing assistance and guidance for travellers in the realm. Unfortunately, this is no more. He takes a crank at the side of the lift and pulls it down. The entire elevator shudders around you. As the lift is descending, he says... We are going down a thousand feet or more. There is a most unusual realm gate. The realm gate, much like the beacon above, is dead. We are certain that the two are linked, but the best of the collegiate arcane, the Ironworld arsenal, and other very clever folk have not made much progress. The key, we believe, will be in the Undercity. The watching elevator shudders and opens. What you'll need to do is find a guide to the Undercity. 
discover the source of this realm gate's power and maybe reactivate it before the forces of Zinch can overwhelm us completely. As you know, without access to a realm gate, we are in an incredibly vulnerable position. The doors open and you stand there in front of this colossal stone gate. If you imagine you're on the you're on the sort of bottom layer of this right here, um, high above there is another twirling orrery. It seems to very very gently be spinning. Uh, it actually um, it's almost imperceptible how how slowly it's moving, but it's definitely moving. And then above it there are a set of gantries and plankways that are all populated by groups of scientists, groups of academics, wizards, all of those sorts of folk. The cane says, I do have one contact that you might be able to make use of. Someone who has been useful to us in the past. I will say he is not one to be trusted, though. He goes by the name of Prasarium Shandos. He is a guide. Most likely you'll find him in one of the taverns, and he should give you some sort of guidance to the Undercity. But first, see what you can learn about this realm gate. See if you can make any sense of our experts here. How long has it been broken for? <laughs> to the best of our knowledge, it has never been active. It has been here for so they say thousands of years, long before the Stormcast took over this, this, this city. So, Tidemaster can cast Witch Sight mm -hmm. and have a little investigation and see what's happening with the Realm Gate to see if there's something interacting with it. Excellent. Cool. So you step forth into this quite busy chamber. There are people like milling around. Um, as I said, some a couple of wizards, a couple of academic -y type folks. Um, there's also a couple of um, uh, Dwarden, uh, strangely familiar Dwarden to some of you, um, milling about the area as well. Um, is Witch Sight a spell that you uh, need to do a roll for? It's not a spell, it's a talent. Uh, okay. So I guess cool, cool. You, you can tell me what to roll. Sure, sure. So, uh, so what exactly are you looking for? What are you trying to appraise with your witch sight? The witchy business. Just general magic-y stuff. Yeah. Okay. Could it's, you give me... I can me... see magic stuff with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Could you give me a uh, awareness mind check, please? Um, awareness mind. Uh, yeah, 6-1. Well, the stream, six, that means one. you roll all of your awareness and mind dice and see if you can get a single six or more. I don't have any You can blobs. do it! Uh, you don't have any blobs in awareness? No. So it'll just be your whatever your mind score is, that many dice. Oh, four. So four d6. Yeah. Does that work? No, that's not. That's not it. Um, I think even even with the witch sight, um, what is what is especially clear about the the realm gate that you see before you is that it is definitely off. It might have magical power, but it is it is completely uncharged. Um, this uh, um, circling orrery above has clearly got some latent magic around it, um, but it is. It would appear to be, from the outside at least, utterly dead. What's the floor like? Is it worked stone? Is it rough? Is it dirt? Is it tile? What? Yeah, so it, uh, it is basically like very, very dark marble all the way along the floor. Um, and as you, as you trace along the outside, you see that the, the walls kind of, um, kind of go sheer upwards and i said there is this sort of gangplank that is basically being installed above the top of the um uh, of the realm gate um and there are a series of doors um above on this that lead into this gangplank if that makes sense sort of directly above you 
Um, the stain is, is certainly worked, um, and it has been, it's quite well made. It appears uh, potentially to be, it's definitely not natural, um, and it's not been hand chiseled. Okay, I was just so, gonna uh, see. Uh, go on. Sorry, go on. No, it's okay. Um, I was gonna say, like, what what are the physical inscriptions? Like, I was looking for magical shit. What are the physical inscriptions on the on the archway? Cool. So, as you uh, approach the the archway, um, a mage steps up towards you. Um, uh, it's not Lady Vitali. She has a different name in this one. <laughs> um, um, she says, it is quite beautiful, isn't it? Quite, quite interesting. My name is Cadiz Ahmad. I am the head of the Gold College here in Brightspear. I am looking forward to seeing your thoughts. You see, there are a number of mysteries surrounding this realm stone door. One of which, of course, is the gateway itself. I theorize that if it was correctly attuned, it could potentially lead to any of the realms surrounding it. But, despite our best efforts, we have not been able to ascertain the mysterious power which opens this doorway. I'm slightly confused, right? So you said that the the big lantern it used to be on and it used to protect everyone. Mm, and so then, then... the mysteries say. Okay, so that has been broken for thousands of years, just as this doorway's been broken for thousands of years. Correct. Okay, right. Uh, I'm not confused anymore. <laughs> Raz is, is going to step forward and say, "Ah, uh, such." Beauties are often hard to decipher, and she's going to do this really elaborate bow, uh, and it's going to be like, uh, My name is uh, Rosalia Wave Rider, uh, Enchante, and, and swoop back <laughs> upwards. Would you give me a mind guile check for me, please? <laughs> uh, four one. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, Oh. <laughs> have you any any focus to spend? Uh, I... Yes, I do. I have one focus. Excellent. There we go. So you can get your one success. Excellent. <laughs> um, Perfect. First, Cadiz doesn't quite know what to make of you. Uh, and then she says, Oh, aren't you a funny one? Well, we have learned some things, you see. This realm gate needs some sort of external power to operate it. The cables and um, uh, uh, networks that, that, that seem to expand deep beneath the city, possibly down into the undercity itself. I am certain that the beacon and the gate are tied together. Although... It is a curious thing that one would operate without the other. Perhaps hmm, this realm gate has existed for as long as the city has. There must have been some reason to build it in the first place. Of this we are not entirely sure. It is merely hypothetical. How long have you been working on trying to get this work working? We have been here for only a matter of months. I've been leading a team from the College Arcane, as you can see. But we have also drawn in other help from other sides of the city. Ashira Katri from the uh, Artisan Guild is also here. And for what help they are, Bragacopto, the captain of the Fire Slayers, is also here and has some theories of his own. Although, between you and I, I would not give them a huge amount of credence. 
so if you've got all of these people uh, who've been working on this for so long, why do you think we're going to be able to sort it out? If I am to be entirely honest, it would appear that your binding has a certain set of skills which our researchers might lack. If the question, if the answer, I should say, to the question lies within the Undercity, a perilous place, two things are certain. One, a voyage down there is far beyond the capabilities of any of my researchers or us academics. And two, we are not the only ones that will be seeking this answer. The forces of chaos, too, would especially like the the result of this realm gate being open. What have you tried so far? I have... My explorations have been more theoretical, academic, if you will. I have written a number of journals and, and memos and, um, and, and, and postings about what I theorize the, the, the gate might be. If you are interested in hard evidence, then Ashari will be able to give you more guidance. He is more the they are, they are more the experimenter, I believe. That's a lot of words for nothing. Well, if you would like some assistance with the uh, practical oh. side of things, you know where to find me. <laughs> yes, no, I understand that's why you're here. Is there a bit of confusion? <laughs> <laughs> no, no confusion at all. Crystal clear. I think now this is going to look like, stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raz has feel... no heed whatsoever. <laughs> I feel it's like stop. Time Master is just like... <laughs> um, Time Master is my wingman and I won't have it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's some sort of music playing in his head and he's just... <laughs> Navis, while this is going on, what what would you like to do? Um, I think Namis is a bit unimpressed because he feels like they're just too. They think that they are going into the other city isn't. They're not good enough. Like it's not good enough for them, and we're just basically just going to be doing their dirty work. So she's going to actually kind of like peel off and look at the um gate again. I think. Um, and see if it's anything that she recognises or has kind of come across before in the past. Sure. I, I got from that that they were too scared to go down there and they wanted the... It oh. makes sense that your characters would see that differently, though. Yeah, I like, think that, so. That was <laughs> that in, in, yeah. in character perspective different. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Tide Master's like, I'm going to be the hero here. <laughs> and yeah. Now it's just like, no, that was the hero. <laughs> But just do the things that other people can't. <laughs> so, would you be able That's to give a me a? Lead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Namus, would you be able to give me a mind arcana check, please? Six one. Yeah. Seeing Namus peel off and seeing those two obviously able to look after themselves, I'm just going to follow along. Um, mm -hmm. I have a point of focus, so that's one success. Okay, excellent. Okay. So, you get a little bit more understanding about it. Um, it is it is sort of how um, uh, it's definitely how Cadiz mentioned. There are there are cables and things like that that are leading further down to the ground. But there is something else as well. The three doors which lead into the top of this chamber um, are completely sealed shut. Um, and you notice that the, the inscriptions, while indecipherable, um, appear to match the, the three doors that are there as well. Um, it's potential that there's potential that those doors might have something to do with getting these uh, uh, activated, but it may not. You're not entirely sure. Okay. So from what I understand, just kind of out of character, we, we have to go and find, like, the power source or something? Like, we think that it's linked somewhere else in the city, uh, the Undercity. Is that That's, right? Uh, that is what um, Cadiz um, and Duquesne have both said, yes. Okay, cool. 
So where are we going? If you'd like to just crack on, you're you're more than welcome to. I think so, because I think it might be better to find whatever we are looking for in the Undercity and then come back and see, like, if we need to, then... Damis has the information about the three doors, but I feel like there's no point doing that right now. Um, but I guess we had we had a contact, didn't we? Someone... Mm -hmm. someone uh, I remember who. You do. Prasarium, Prasarium Shandos. Um, uh, Duquesne is waiting for you um, at the elevator and says, Come, let's find Presarium Shandos. Now, cut uh, to Razzis. a little bit later. You are striding through the city above ground. It's, it's morning now. People are starting to get everything set up. Everything is happening. Um, Duquesne says, Presarium is a sticky character. He is not entirely honest and, for all intents and purposes, definitely not trustworthy. If you are um, to find him, you might have to use some of your own contacts as well. It would do well to find... you would do well to find him soon, and when you do find him, ensure he does not get away. He is, I should add, wanted for a small number of petty crimes, the likes of which the Stormcast would certainly like to get their metallic mitts on him. So, how are you, the, the Binding, going to try and track down Presarium Shandos? You have the entire of the City of Bright Spear at your disposal. Do we have a vague description of him? Aye, uh, he's a uh, shot human. Brown hair, relatively nondescript sort of character. Very nervous. He will most likely be hiding out in some bar or tavern. He lives usually day to day. Mm, not a particularly affluent fella, but certainly of a nervous disposition. But, despite all this, he is the finest guide to the Undercity that we know of. Is he at all magical? Mm, to the best of my knowledge, no. He is not one that... Uh, <laughs> has displayed those gifts in the past. My witch sight is useless. <laughs> well, listen, and I I think this might be a last resort, but I do know someone who knows people. And we're not exactly on the best of terms at the moment. But my old fence might be able to give us a helping hand. Um Decaying does a does a peering over his witchfinder hat and says <laughs> I will not uh inquire as to how you have a particular contact with an old fence, but if it is a contact that is useful to you, I would urge you to employ it. No, nothing illegal, don't worry. I mean like a sentient wooden divider that separates the gardens of two friends of mine. That's what I mean. He uh, looks over uh, <laughs> at Dendrail and says, <laughs> You gonna take that? <laughs> I've heard far worse. From me. Well, also true. Time, as I said, is of the essence. Should you uh, need any assistance, then I will be back at the spire, but... One final question. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know of any usual haunts that this person frequents? Mm. Typically, he has been known to frequent the bar of Lowstone's Tavern as well as the pickled ifrit when he has the need for a bite to eat. Oh, I believe that both of these were places on your bar crawl. Guys, can we go back to the pickled ifrit because they had really good sushi? I mean, I don't see why not. If, if we have to go there, we can, I don't know, comp it as a business expense? I, I think that's a very sound idea. I'm quite hungry. Tidemaster is just like... 
I'm not going to take them out because I don't know if I'll be able to put them back in. It'll be a bad nope. book. That's very, that's very fair. That's very much fair enough. Actually, before you go... He's just hyped for sushi. <laughs> before you go, um... I've worked many tracking jobs in the past and have been given an allotted stipend to find this person. Do we have any sort of resources that we might use in order to find this person? Could you give me a guile mind check 5-1, please? Can't get much worse than last time. You say that. Yeah, you do say that. Well. Oh. There you go. I think that's a success. I... Decane kind of leans back and says, I should say, Dendriel, that you are no longer a mere mercenary. You are a soul bound. Your whole purpose is to support the efforts of Order and of Sigma, but I do understand the situation that you're in. I would be willing to give you, say, 500 drops in expenses. I will not be requiring receipts for these, but I would urge you to spend them well. More than generous, we will find this person. Splendid. Well, is payment up well, front or is it on completion? I think um, it was up front then. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Decane takes out the. I, I, 100 drops is a. Wait, is 100 drops a globe? I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it's a somewhere. sphere or something? Sphere. So, he takes out five spheres of Agua Caranis um, and hands them to you. I guess he gives one to each of you and then. Maybe one extra one to Dendriel. So if you want to add a hundred uh, or two hundred to your your monies. Okay. Cool. And then, what would you like to? Do? Are you all going to the same place together, or are you going to split up, or? Um, we should probably go get some food together at the Pickle de Frite and scout the place. Let's not split the party. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Excellent. Okay, so you head over to the Pickle the Freak. You obviously remember the Pickle the Freak from a couple of weeks ago when you came here for your your uh, eating contest. I believe there was an eating contest involving an explosive fish, um, which which was very very eventful. And um, the owner of the Pickle the Freak welcomes you in and says, "Ah, ah more guests. Splendid, splendid." I have a I have a very wide selection of new delicacies for you to try. It was uh, it was the sushi you were interested in. You were you you were the oh, fishman. Yes. yes, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Let me let me consult my my new menus that we have got here. Oh, oh very splendid. Yes, no, we have some no, we have some action tuna that's just come in um fresh fresh today. Um, we have obviously Dairan cockles. They're very very. Uh, actually quite bitter. Um, would perhaps not recommend those, but but you know they are they are certainly delectable. Um and uh, can, yes. Can Tidemaster just cause cause you know how he's got lots of lots of capes and watery, misty, billowing items of clothing. Mm -hmm. Can he just materialize this iridescent fish? Um and say, Could you please make some sushi with this? You're just gonna summon a fish. Yeah, I just pull it out yeah? of my. So, could you give me a. I don't think this is an official spell, but we're gonna go for it anyway. Could you give me a channeling mind? Uh, a six <laughs> one. Can it be. Can it be a new, new spell, materialized fish? Um, I mean, making a spell. Uh, Raz is gonna look to her. <laughs> Raz is gonna look to him and, and, and say, Well, are you keeping that? <laughs> and I just, I just look at her. I'm like, There's more where that came from. <laughs> oh, horrible! Worse. <laughs> at this point, Ramis goes and orders a very large glass of wine. 
Excellent, excellent. Dendrail is definitely going to join you. Just leave them to it. It's just like, what is this? Um, did, you said you said a mind channeling spell, right? Yes. So it's a I roll five d six. Uh, yeah, no, that's a success. What does this fish look like that you summon out of thin air? It's like black and iridescent. Um. Yeah, I, when you again, make sushi, like the flesh is black as well. It's like a goth fit. It's it's a goth. It's fit. a goth fit. I see. I see. Yeah. Yes. No. Ah, oh, splendid. No. I, and it's this... you can only find it in like the darken realms. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> the the finest of shaishi shaishi and sushi. Oh gosh, that's hard. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Shai shaishi and sushi. Oh, <laughs> I need to compose myself. Uh, yeah, certainly, the best of shaishi and sushi. Splendid, splendid. Yes, with a with a little uh, a little bit of uh, oh yes, a common uh, a shaman wasabi. Yes, no, we should we should do, do something splendid with this. And he 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 takes it away from you, very very excited, and goes into the back rooms. Um, while this is happening, have fun. <laughs> Uh, what sort of drinks would you like to get? I have a selection of items on the menu right here, which is very good. Um, we have got lots of pints, lots and lots of pints. There doesn't seem to be any wines, unfortunately. Um, there is a cauldron of blood, which is a, a darkling stout with a dark reddish brown colour, uh, which contains a few drops of blood in every pint, uh, but they're probably not from intelligent creatures, you think. Um, there is also uh, magmalt, uh, which is kind of like a frothy, foamy, uh, malty pint. Uh, there is wargrove shut. What is wrong with my seas today? Wargrove cider, uh, which is a sharp, refreshing cider, supposedly brewed by the Sylvaness and Gairan, um, or from uh, Duardian with exceptionally good branding. Um, and yeah, of course, Dendril is... doesn't recognise it at all. Doesn't seem legit. No, no. <laughs> It would it would be like an Australian coming here and seeing Fosters and being like, what is this? <laughs> what sort of thing would you like to get? Are you asking me any questions? Are you doing any inquiry? What hard spirits do you have? Hard spirits. So I think I think uh, in in line with the sort of uh, sushi theme, I think there's probably a very like a slightly uh, may, maybe a sake that's made with salt water. You know, so it has like a very slight edge to it, and it's probably a little bit cloudy. And if we're being honest, not altogether unpalatable, but in that way that some hard spirits can be. Um, I think you can get a good a good dram of that for uh, six drops. I mean, I've got a hundred. Well, now, yeah, at least a hundred. I think you all started with a couple, but yeah. yeah. Well, but considering I provided the fish as well, so my food's probably not going to be that expensive. So I'll, I'll just order everyone this cloudy sake. Okay, excellent. You've got some wonderful uh, Ideneth sake. Yep. I mean, I, I said that uh, Namis was drinking wine, but since you said the, the weird blood drink, it's going to have to be the weird blood drink. That's definitely <laughs> yeah, what that she is, uh <laughs> That is uh, five five drops. Um, oh no, six drops. Sorry. When you drink a cauldron of blood drink, um, mm. does it remind you of another time that you've drank it, or another another instant where you've been involved, either in the production or the the uh, distribution of this particular drink? Ooh. Um, I think it reminds Namis of a party that she had um that was more of a kind of diplomatic party type thing but there was a lot of drinking involved um and i think that she yeah that's what it reminds her of of um talking to people and um kind of yeah yeah just that <laughs> excellent excellent uh what is Raz and Dendriel having? Uh, Raz will take the free drink that's being offered by Tidemaster, like 100%. Uh, and I think she will offer a toast uh, to... 
Uh, <laughs> to, to going down on Bright Spear. Yeah. <laughs> and real. <laughs> Um, how quickly, out, out of character, how quickly, Luke, are you going to try and kill off Raz? Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm loving it. I, it feels a lot like you were like, I'm going to be the anti Raylus. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I needed, I needed a, a fresh change. No, I like it. I like it. I will admit, this feels, this feels a little bit therapeutic in some ways, but I'm sure there's nothing to that. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> live, live vicariously, you know? Look, my boyfriend is in the stream watching. Uh, <laughs> he knows how terrible I am at flirting. No, I like it. I love it. It's great. Uh, Dendril. Uh, Dendril's going to take the free drink as well. Um, he's going to sort of shrug at this toast and quickly down it and then look around the bar to see if there's anyone either matching the description he's been told or watching us okay really good really good question um so could you give me an awareness mind check please um for one uh. I realised a minute ago I didn't roll as many dust as I should have done the first time, but oh well. You got it though, didn't you? No, I didn't. I got like oh. a bunch of ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's alright. Oh, yeah. Well, it's fine anyway. Uh, yes, so... There does seem to be... Um, someone that is at the edge of the room. And actually, I'm going to have to ask Raz. Your fence... Who are they and what are they like? Uh, oh, good question. Um, they are. Is is do I didn't are they a, a specific kind of dwarf or is that the Warhammer no. equivalent of dwarf? Yeah, Duarden is just the word for dwarf. Um, there tends to be. Okay. Um, you have like like free city dwarfs who are kind of mm -hmm. your, your more stereotypical fantasy dwarf. Uh, then you have um, the kind of, the profiteer Duardin, who are the ones with the big metal suits and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have the fire slayers, who are the big gingery ones. Um, those are sort of three different types of Duardin. Yeah. Okay, I think he's, he, they're, they're the sort of, they're the free city mm -hmm. Duardin. Um, I think they are completely hairless, though. Like, no beard, no head hair, um, mm -hmm. like, no eyebrows. I don't know where oh, really? I'm picking this up from, but this is, okay. this is how I'm envisaging them. Um, like, for a fence, they're quite noticeable, I think, but I think that's yeah. kind of how they sort of are known in the industry. Like, oh, like, yeah, you can go to... I'm trying to come up with a, with a Duarden name. Um... Harold. Yeah, you could go. You can go to to, to Harold. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, wouldn't have to be uh, like whatever their fence name is is not necessarily their real name either. So it could be a Harold. name that they've they've been given. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone calls him Harold, or them Harold. <laughs> yeah. Harold the Barrel. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. The name is Har Harold, and that's not their real name, but that's the name they give to everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think so that's this what that's what this like. is Amazing. who Dendriel spots from across the room, um, and you obviously don't know, you don't know Harold, but he really does stand out, um, looking as he does a little bit like Matt Lucas from what I get the impression. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> uncomfortably similar. Yeah, I'm not going to do a Matt Lucas voice. Um, <laughs> but you, but Andrew, you notice that, that that this strange Duarden figure is definitely like eyeing up your table with suspicion. Okay, I nudge Raz with my elbow and basically inform him uh, that um, yeah, 
we're being watched. You especially. Uh, Raz sort of rests her arm on the on the table and says, "Dendril, honey, I'm always being watched." <laughs> um, but. <laughs> In a Wait, way uh, that <laughs> isn't the usual way. This this person doesn't seem enormously happy that we're here and is watching us with great interest. Uh, okay, so Raz is gonna is gonna take a look around and see if she can spot the person that's that's looking at her. I think yeah, you'd spot him. But I'm not gonna do a roll for that or anything. Yeah, I think I think both of their eyes lock. And I think just the colour kind of drains from her face a little bit. Um, and with that, the doing and, and starts sort of just stomp swallows. towards you. Everyone else, you've just seen, in fact, especially Time Master and Namis, you've just seen this Duardin appear. You don't know how you didn't notice them before. Appear just out of this throng of people and appears to be storming their way towards Raz. Seeing Raz's reaction to this, uh, Dendril's going to step between the two of them. Okay, so, um, could you give me a, um, uh, I think it's going to be a reflexes body check, uh, and it's going to be contested with this character. So, how many fours you get is the successes. Okay. Uh, ooh, I've got four successes. Oh, you got you got three successes, so you do like hold him up uh, and pull him up short, and he says, "One of you owes me money." Harold, darling, it's so wonderful to see you. We were just leaving, weren't we? Yeah. Everybody, yes. Um, That's what I thought you was doing. I. Well, you see, we you. Listen, listen, listen. I think this is all going to be a big misunderstanding because you yes, know, no. you know no, I how think much you're I... quite right. I think there has been a misunderstanding here, Captain Raz. Or are you still uh, a captain when you don't have no ship? Oh, I don't think uh, you know. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he's sad. Uh, is this really where you want to do this, Harold? You know how much I sorely value you as a colleague and co-worker. I wouldn't want anything to sour that relationship. Which is strange, because it seems like souring relationships is a bit of a calling card of yours, isn't it, Rat? I'll get okay. to the point here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Norris was at that point going to just draw her dagger and just hold it out so that no one else can see apart from the people in this situation just very threateningly and just be like okay no like you're crossing a line here yeah Raz is, is gonna put a hand on Namus's outstretched arm and just and just push it down and 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 just say listen we we're not here to cause any trouble Okay, and we don't need to make a scene, do we, Harold? Well, we certainly don't need to, no. Harold's a bit of a drama queen, I guess. Harold! <laughs> Harold, I do not know you. You do not know me. You don't know most of this group. You are vastly outnumbered, and very rude. Calm yourself. Ooh, Dendriel. I, I want to say, I feel like I want, I want this to be kind of like a combined thing. So, Dendriel, could you give me a dial mind check? And then, um, Namis, what's the best one for you here? Uh, I feel like it's really hard. There's not like a threatened thing. Um, it's intimidation, yeah. Intimidation, of course there is, yeah. Could you give me an intimidation uh, soul check, please? Um, the diff difficulty for both of them being 4 1. Well, I got mine. One success. 
Oh my god, four successes. Oh Jesus Christ, oh, you nailed that. No. <laughs> I can this. She's terrifying. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to say that... God. Amazing. I think that... Um, I think that Harold probably, if not knows, then definitely knows of Namis. Uh, in your kind of pre-fallen state. And he takes a step back and crosses his hands. And at that point, it's only then that you notice that one of his hands was actually on the hilt of a dagger in his waist. And he says, All right, then. What do you want? Look. We've got off to a bad start this evening. Let's all sit down and we'll discuss it. Not in the middle of the tavern floor, maybe. And and uh, she goes over and and finds an empty table in the corner or on the kind of wall of, of the room. Mm-hmm. Tidemaster just pours out another glass of sake and, and gives it to Harold. Uh, in don't... a very overly confident way that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Dendrail's gonna whisper to Raz. It's, it's my experience th- that this sort of confrontation should be done as publicly as possible. I appreciate your candor, Dendrail. I do, honestly, to the bottom of my heart. But please... Please listen to me on this one. We can use him. Okay, we can, we can, if we're going to get what we want, this is how we're going to do it. Very well. At your lead. Yeah, Namis is going to take Raz's lead on whatever she says. You're sitting in Um, this new corner table. Um, Harold is sitting on the chair that is closest to the door, and he's very careful that he, he can see all of you in his, like, arc of vision, so to speak. Um, one of his hands is on the table, the other one is underneath it. <laughs> he says, So, what are you doing snooping around Bright Spear? Uh, Raz sort of leans in and, um, says my friends and i we are looking for someone in particular and your name was the first person that crossed our minds we know how useful you are at finding people and knowing things um he's about yay high uh human fairly nondescript very nervous goes by the name of i can't remember his name presarian uh, shandos thank you uh, goes by the name of Presarium Shandos. I don't suppose you know him, do you? Could you give me a guile mind check, please? Five once. Okay. Oh. <laughs> nope. That's uh, a thing. I might. I think it's all. No, I might know a little bit about Shandos, yes. I know he's a cheating bastard. And I know you can't trust him. I could even tell you where to find him. But what will you give me for it? Being as you're already you say... in my debt. You say he's a he's a cheating bastard. Is it you that he's cheated, my good friend? Oh, I don't think there's a single person he's even encountered in his entire lowly life that he hasn't somehow cheated over. Even his own mother, I reckon. Not to well. Be I think it's within the public interest and within your personal interest that this specific degenerate be removed from the scene shall we say you tell us where he is and uh we'll be able to do that for you 
quite interesting proposition, though. Hmm. If you make sure that he's not... There is something you could do for me when you find it. Presarium is an experienced traveller of the Undercity. He knows his way around them parts. Now, what I'd like to know is where his dead drops are. See, he's able to hide things in the Undercity that even the Stormcast can't find. If you can find me a couple of these dead drops, I reckon we might be even Steven, so to speak. You say even Stevens? Is that my debt included in that? <sighs> Don't push your luck, Elf. We'll see how it goes. The more dead drops you're able to uh, discover, you know. the more of your debt will repay. Oh, you know me, Ra uh, Harold. Uh, I am the pusher of luck. <laughs> this much is true. Where did they tell you you might be? Well, he, they did give this place as a specific one of his haunts. Uh, and You'd have to there, have was, there was one other, I don't know. To afford this place. Well... Time is, sometimes he goes to low stones, sometimes he goes 12 taps. Low stones more likely, that old fungal brewery. The beer there is pretty cheap, mm. especially since they had that squig outbreak a couple of weeks back. But I heard of it. Terrible audio. I don't know if yes, you're you were there, weren't either. you? <laughs> no, she just heard of it. <laughs> I don't believe he was there. Depends who you ask. <laughs> nah. <laughs> See, I reckon you'll find him over at the White Lion. Where it's over Lion? at the very edge of the city, set into the rocks, so you see. It's uh, not the most reputable of places. But Shando's, you see, a lot of folks want him dead. And you know what? Can't say as I blame him. If he sees you coming, or hears you after him, you'll be in trouble. So we have to sneak. If he has so many regular haunts, why do you think that he'll be at this white lion? Hmm. Well, he's not here, is he? Could be at Low Stones, but Low Stones has been largely closed since the old Squig outbreak. I know he's got creditors at a number of the other places, but White Lion has a lot of folk coming in and out, so you see. A lot of folk can be there inconspicuous like. If I was him, that's where I'd be. Less people that might know who you is. Thank you for the advice. Well, You're very Harold, welcome. This has been just as lovely as it always is. And you can take that whichever way you like, my dear. But it sounds like we have a lead. You do. And no. How do we know he's telling us the truth? Because he wants those dead drops. He wants the dead drops. But, um. Dendro's gonna say. Right. Then we have an accord. And he's, and he's going to hold out whichever hand it is that is the one that's under the table to shake. Oh, oh, I like that. Harold leans back, pockets his dagger, <laughs> and takes your hand. Good well, choice, Harold. We do have an accord. Well, I think we do. Cut to See, boom. making friends wherever we go. I like to think <laughs> that during that entire scene, there's just some poor waiter walking around the back with this plate of sushi going, they were here a second ago. Where the hell have they gone? <laughs> 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 
the black magic fish. <laughs> and it's at this point that Time Master remembers that he's got frickin' sushi. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. At least the sushi can't go cold. Um, oh, exactly. <laughs> True that. I feel like he just rises out of his chair in some, like, watery mist, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and then the waiter's like, oh! There you are. <laughs> there's one of the few Iden F Deepkin I've ever seen in my entire life. No, no, there's not many of you. It's, uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> cool. So, what are we doing now? Eating sushi. Plan oh, you mean after? Please. Oh, just awkwardly waiting for Harold to leave the table. Oh, Harold leaves. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's got what he came for. Um, so I guess we're going to the lion then. Yeah, as uh, someone who used to have a lot of contacts in the city, the White Lion sounds like a place where Namus might know someone. Do we oh, think yeah. that that's likely? Yeah. Um, I think sounds so. Like I, place. I think specifically for the reason that Harold said, the White mm. Lion is is a place where, you know, like it's like the opposite of Cheers. It's a place where no one cares what your name is. Yeah. Yeah. You know? okay. Nobody yeah. knows your name. And that's the advantage. You know, people come in and out. Like, it's it's yeah. relatively... Um, uh, it's relatively peaceful in a weird way. Um, because people never know who's going in there. But also, you don't know if the person sitting next to you is just just a, a regular old Sigmarite acolyte that's just wandered in for a pilgrimage. Or, like, a serial mass murderer that cuts people's chests open. It could be either. It's very hit or miss. I think that that's the perfect kind of place that Namus would have spent quite a lot of time in, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, no, I think you probably would know the White Lion pretty well. You'd be able to lead the way across the city to get there. Mm-hmm, okay. So, so you approach the White Lion, and as uh, Harold said, it is essentially set into a, a cliff at the side. You know, like, um, is it, is it Italy or France? I'm sure, well, I'm sure they're all over the place, but, like, when they've got the bars and things like that that are like built into the into the sheer rock faces of the wall. Very yeah, there's like that. there's one in Italy. In, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it, it looks quite quite impressive, but it's obviously been built up on itself, and they keep on like blasting out the back to like make it a little bit bigger <laughs> every couple of years and stuff like that. Um, so it looks very it looks very precarious and um, perched on the edge of this this cliff face, but um, it's got a sort of a very weathered looking uh white lion um uh that uh what you call pop sign that's kind of like swinging and and actually as it swings on one side of it it becomes
as far as regulars can be in this place, I guess that does make sense. I know someone who works here, so that should be fine. Also, how Unless... does how does one sneak around the back of a cliff? Oh, a ah. very good <laughs> There's a tunnel. There's a tunnel. There's an access tunnel. There must be an access. Ooh. There we go. Oh. No. Yeah, Unless I reckon it's best to have you front and center and and doing working Ooh. your magic. So I think, I think that. I think that Namus knows someone who, like, um, somebody who works at the bar or, like, in the kitchen or whatever, and so would be fine to, yeah, enter around the back and the access tunnel, so, yes, I'm gonna do that. I think this is definitely the sort of place that's got, like, a, like, a, almost like a, like a prohibition tunnel or yeah. something like that. Something for when the storm cracks well, arrive and start kicking up a fuss. When the bootleggers can sort of all escape out the back as the storm yeah. uh, comes in the front. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what, so all going in separately, and then is that it? We're we just going to go straight in, or is there a plan for like, if you if you spot Presarium or how you're going to recognise Presarium? Uh, Dendril, why don't you stand or lean or? grow i don't know what it is you do really like next to the door just in case he decides to to shoot off very well sounds like a plan and then you can you know tree hug him to death or something i don't know i, I mean I, i'm not gonna grow or anything from the stand there but yeah hey I mean, look i'm not gonna limit your opportunities here okay you do what you like when you're in that area also, tree hugging him to death would not be ideal, considering he's going to be your guide. I had considered that after I said it. <laughs> I didn't realise. <laughs> I think that Namus will probably, um, the plan would be for her to go in and then kind of have a chat to the person that she knows and see if they've seen someone who matches Prezorium's description. Um, and then with the idea that, like, Namus would go over to them if they were there. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed they are. Cool. And what's Tidemaster doing? I think Tidemaster's just rolling along. <coughs> oh, wait. No, we decided to all split up. Um... Well, you can just both be sitting in different, like, areas of the, the part of the bar. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. spread out in case anything happens, kind of thing. Don't summon fish. Don't summon a oh. fish. That's your strict instructions that... not to summon another fish. It's. I won't summon another fish. It draws attention. I mean, people don't, don't usually see Ivan and Deepkin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get attention, attention anyway. Well, yes, I, I am also going to get attention, but minimize the attention you get. Don't be like, ooh. I'm an Iden Deepkin. Check it out. I produce fish. That, that's a good way to. Yeah. You're just jealous because you can't produce fish. You can't materialize fish. We all have our own things that we can do. But yeah. We need to lay low here. Yeah. Tom oh, Namis, you know me too well. <laughs> Namis rolls her eyes at you. I feel, and I'm just like, hey. I feel like Namus, Namus says, we need to lay low here. And at that moment, Raz goes, well, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, Dendra's just going to turn to Namus and be like, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> so, Namus is going to go in. Yeah. Yeah. The inside of the white lion. Oh, sorry. Were you going to say something there? I was just going to be really extra and be like, well, fine then. And then I cast Abyssal Darkness, which gives me total cover and defense plus two. Okay, you're going to have to roll for that. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. I, I just wanted to be extra. Yeah, no, no. It'll be a channeling mind. Roll, roll to be yeah. extra. Yep. Oh, wait, how does, how does the dice pool work with it? Because now I've got two focus in channeling. So the way it works is that um, you still roll the same number of dice, but the focus means you can add plus one to a dice. But you you have to, it has to be different dice. So if you've got two focus, you can add plus one to two different dice. 
that makes sense? Oh, right. It's if it's if you've got more than one in training that you get more dice, right? That's right, yeah, yeah that's great. There we go, okay. Yeah. How many successes do you need for Abyssal Darkness? It's 5-2. Uh, so yeah, that's a success, right? Because you've got, yeah, you, you've got the focus. So yes. yeah, what, what does it look like, this, this moment where you cast Abyssal Darkness? Um, so I, I, do, I do like this, right? And all of my sea floaty misty cloaks go whoosh and then I'm gone. Okay. Uh, cool. Just misty sea air. So until the start of your next turn, you and your allies in your zone are treated as though you're in total cover. Your defense increases two steps. Uh, so <laughs> if you move to another zone, it moves with you. So you are going to stride into the white line. And as you do so, the room fills with unnatural darkness. <laughs> oh, Christ. Can we see you through this darkness? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> right, okay. In Ariana, in Ariana's defence, okay, no fish were summoned. <laughs> we we didn't say anything. We didn't say anything about unnatural darkness pooling around. Yeah, I was I was too literal. Really, this is my fault. I guess. <laughs> So actually, it extends around you and your allies. It doesn't actually extend around the whole area. So, so basically, <laughs> whoever you pick, Tidemaster, is going to look like a shadow person as you walk into this pub. <laughs> I mean, I, th I thought it was just for myself. Oh, that's fine. It can just be for you. That makes it a lot easier for me to figure out what's yeah. going on. Yeah, I just cool. did it to myself. Because the yeah, first, no, I like that. I like that. The first way you described it, it just made me think of that scene in The Shining with the blood coming out of the elevator, but just darkness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the the inside of the white line, I'm thinking it's like it's not it's not like a single bar space. It's like um, it's like a set of like interlocking mini bar type rooms, if you know what I mean, where like. There's lots of different... It's almost cavernous. It could keep on going for ages and ages and ages. But basically, each section has got just enough space for, like, a single bar and, like, three or four people to sit in. And then it links to another one. And it's a whole, like, mini network of all of these different... All of these different um, chambers, essentially. Um, so, um, as you make your way inside, um, uh, Time Master completely shrouded... Um, uh, you you see a selection of different sort of patrons all around uh, around the place. Um, a lot of them are tucked away. It's a really good place if you want to hide. Um, big benefit, Namis, is that you'll know about the place is that it's basically impossible to get eye line on anyone that's more than about two meters away from you because there's so many like jagged edges and corners. It makes it a very easy place to hide, um, even if there's people in the same. People could be in the same bar and not know you're there. You know, that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the genius of this accidental architecture. Uh, now that you're inside, what would you like to do? Uh, Raz is, is going to go up to the bar, but as she does so, she's going to be as inconspicuously as she can, be scanning the tables and chairs around to see if she can spot... Uh, uh, Prisarium. Cool. Could you give me a? Um, we're gonna try. It. We're gonna mix things up a bit and do it not regular. Could you give me a stealth mind check, please? Yes. Uh, um. Five one. No, I can't do that for the, you. It, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Uh, I think it would be a very difficult place to do that because you can basically, as you walk up to the bar, in your eye line, you can only see about three people. There could be as many as like 30 or 40 or 50 people in the bar right now, but you can't actually see them because they're all, they're all sort of around the corners. You don't see anyone looking particularly inconspicuous. I think there's a couple of Duarden sailors that are in there. 
Um, there's a couple of elves, um, and obviously a, a fair share of, of, of humans and things like that floating around as well. Um, but yeah, as you come to the bar, you're met by a rather sort of elderly uh, bartender um, wearing with a kind of kind of salt and pepper hair, and she says, "Oh, hello. How how can I help you?" Then? Ah, good evening, madam. Uh, oh, I you. will have. Uh, two ales, please. One for me and one for my friend. A guy named uh, Prisarium should have arrived some time ago. Don't suppose you know where he sat, do you? Uh, Whilst this is going on, I just want to remind Luke, because it wasn't really specified, uh, Dendril, as soon as he got in, just sort of stood by the door. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just you're aware that did happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah no. Sorry, carry I on. Have, I have remembered that you were by the door. Um, the lady leans over, and and as she looks at you, she speaks in a voice which is entirely different to the one that she just did, and says, "Dear, if you think we're giving out names here, then you have come to the wrong place." Now, was it two beers that you said you'd like? I think I can get you two beers. Yes, yeah, those will be those will be five drops apiece. Uh, very well. I will take them. It is my first time here, after all. Yes. Well, there's some uh, seating just o- over on the right in there, dearie. I'm sure you'll find a pleasant company there to drink your two beers on your own. I <laughs> I will endeavour to do just that, and I'll be sure to. Ro- uh, order some more once I have found my friend, uh, yeah. and she will pay the five drops and take ten drops. Beers away. Ten drops, sorry, yeah, uh, and take the beers away. I feel like as just as Raz is about to sit down, like a wisp of air floats past her and takes one of the beers out of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, yeah, experience. I think she's confused for a second and then is like, oh wait, yeah, no, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Now it. Um, <laughs> now it has gone uh, through the tunnel to uh, the kitchens, wherever, cellar, back, back room storage, that kind of thing. Um, and um, yeah, is trying to find someone that she knows. I feel like she knows probably knows a couple of people who work there. Um, I'm terrible with names, so I can't think what I've run off the top of my head. Um, but well, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you do. Could you give me okay. a? Could you give me a stealth body check? Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it'll be a contest to check. Okay. So, as many fours as you can get. Hey! Is... You are rolling well tonight. I am! <laughs> as you are weaving your way down the corridor, you start to hear a familiar voice. Um, and as you, as you hear it, um, how, do you, how do you react when you hear this familiar voice? It's one uh... that you heard very recently uh very recently Ooh. yeah um Look, they're coming for you i told them you was here and they're gonna be coming for you very soon you better get out of here before they find you what would okay. you do uh now i'm gonna try and sneak into wherever they are um sneak basically sneak up on them Okay, so you basically weave your way down. They are they are part of the way down one of these sort of smugglers' escape routes, um, and they are. Uh, you see the back of the back of Harold, um, just as the I think the light at the end of the corridor is probably maybe like 15, 20 meters down, um, and Harold is kind of a, a bulky little fella, um, and is kind of blocking the light um, for the person behind him. Um, and he's saying, look, you 
need to leave Bright Spear right now. They're looking for you. And, you know, I know Raz isn't up to any good. And more importantly, they're working for Sigma. They're working for Celestials up in the tower. If they find you, they're going to rope you in to do some do good of bullshit. And we don't want that, do you? Neither of us want that. No. So, that's why you need to get out of here. They're going to be here any minute now. What do you do? I think that I think that now S kind of um, has her dagger out, but she sort of sidles up and says, "Oh, Harold, thought we had a deal." Harold is visibly surprised, and I think he sort of turns and 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 grabs his knife and says. Oh, bloody hell. And next to him, you see the figure of Presarium Chandos, which I will throw up on the screen right now. He is, as I said earlier, a rather inconspicuous looking fellow. He's wearing a uh, hammer medallion around his neck um, and is, is kind of like, oh, oh, gosh. And he boots it, runs off down the corridor. What do you do? Uh, Naris runs after him. Okay, so, uh, um, uh, Harold is going to try and stop you, so could you give me a, uh, a dexterity body check, and it's going to be a context against his, uh, athletics body check. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, this is where it Good goes luck. wrong. I can only roll one, so... It's a four. Uh, he also got one success. So actually, you both kind of like, I guess in this instance, you both kind of like stop each other, slow each other down. But you managed to break away past him. Um, but you, he, he slowed you down quite significantly. Um, and Presarium is, is running away. Okay. Um, I think... That I'm going to try and cast Arcane Bolt, but not in a, not really trying to hurt him way, just in a, trying to like maybe take out his legs or something. <laughs> it, it's rage, so I don't know what to do. Go for, it. Go for it. Yeah, no, I like it. Um, so, sorry, is that a, that's a mind uh, Arcane channeling? Bolt. It'll, oh, yeah, mind channeling, I it's think. Spell, so, okay. Oh, yeah, loads. Yeah, just loads. <laughs> just so many. Jesus. I don't want to kill you. I think I'm taking it more than just his legs. legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, God, Sorry, I only have to get one success. How, so how much damage do you do? How do we persuade one. this fine mist to help us? Five? Five damage? I mean, okay. I I'm Is it five there. damage? I guess you don't have to use your focus, do you? So, no. Because you could get more. Yeah, I could. <laughs> so you do five damage. Um, no, uh, no, no, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. Sorry, I couldn't. It's only one damage for additional success, and I succeeded on all of them just on a straight roll. It doesn't matter. Oh, wow. I you didn't need yeah. four. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. And Presarium is knocked to the floor. He is, mm -hmm. He's he's taken a, an incredible hit. Back in the pub, um, I think it's probably because of the echoing of the chamber. You all hear what does what does Nemesis Eldritch Bolt, or what is it called, Arcane Bolt? Um, what does it sound like? Oh, I don't really know. Is it kind of like um... an electricity thing, or is it more of a gunshot thing, or is it a kind of fiery thing? I always thought of it as more, her, all of her magic is kind of like smoke uh, and that kind of thing. So I guess it's kind of fiery, so not not like sharp, like a gunshot, more like kind of maybe a force explosion kind of thing. Okay, uh, like, a, like, a, like a pneumatic explosion. Yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds yeah. good. Um, <laughs> like <a> great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So everyone in the pub, all of you in the pub, hear this noise. What do you do? Uh 
Presumably, we also hear Presarium do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. As, as he's knocked on the floor. This, is, like, Wilhelm, this is our Wilhelm scream of the episode. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that the, the whole pub has like gone silent, um, and despite all of the jagged corners and stuff, like Raz, Tide Master, and Dendro managed to lock eyes and are like, "Time to go." Uh, <laughs> Like, I was really hopped up in that the, direction. The, the irony that Namis was so insistent that everyone lay low before yeah. this, yeah. not done with it at all. Dendro was yeah. just going to lock eyes with Raz and go, if I'm honest, I thought it was going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Me too. <laughs> so, is this a conversation? Are you all, so this is important, are you all delving down in to get it? Yeah. Like, uh, to follow the sound. As, as soon as Dendril hears that noise, he knows that this is going to be related to the four of us being here, and he's going to try and get to that noise as soon as possible. This is no longer a covert operation, we feel. No. It is, it's Co cover is blown. Cover is blown. <laughs> so, you take your way into the chambers, and you come to... Uh, Shandos has collapsed on the floor um, just at the, the entrance way um, to the sort of smuggler's route, um, or the exit, I should say. The exit of the smuggler's route. Um, uh, Harold is standing there, uh, and um, Namus is, has got a smoking wand? I don't know, staff? I don't know if you've got anything like that. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know staff. Your hand. Staff, yeah. Staff, yeah. Um, yeah, you all arrive in the middle, and Harold looks at Raz and says... Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't about to hand him over to the authorities. I know that's what you're here to do. Dendrail is pissed. Yeah, oh, Namus is pissed as well. <laughs> Time we, is pissed. <laughs> we had an accord and... With that, Dendrail is going to pick him up, like pin him to the wall. Okay, cool. I like it. Could you give me Raz is a... not going to try and stop him. Um, could you give me a athletics body contest, please? Three successes. One success. So, how, what does it look like? Um, he's like a uh, dwarf, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna lean down, pick him up. And like raise him up the six feet from where from the floor where he was, and just hold him with one hand against the wall. And yeah, his feet are gonna be dangling, and then down the arm that I'm holding him with, um, the legs start to appear under the moss, and the quivering starts to walk down my arm towards him. He's kind of struggling and kicking. He says, "Oh God, what killed me?" I said before, I did not know you, and you did not know me, and we had an accord, and you broke it immediately. Tell me why I shouldn't break you immediately. Oh, you're just dogs of Sigma. Nothing more. You think you can sit up there all high and mighty on the top of this city? You don't give a shit about us down in the boot depths. Uh, Raz is going to draw one of her swords um, and is going to say <sighs> Harold, Harold, Harold you know me you know that I've been down there you know that I've been everywhere we are the same except right now you are so so fucked <laughs> Because if I know you, I know that you wouldn't want anybody else knowing that you've been here tonight. <laughs> and if I'm still in your debt, and I'm assuming that debt isn't going to be cleared anymore now that you've gone behind my back. So really, I see no reason why I shouldn't spill your entire guts over the paving slabs of this inn. Hmm? Give me an intimidation soul check. Uh, I can. 5-1. If it helps at all, the quivering has now reached my hand and is sort of like 
little yeah, mand- gonna, mandibles are like touching around on his face. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say four one because actually this is quite an intimidating situation for him to find himself in. Yes, that's a success. Uh, fine, fine. Get your get your tree friend to let me go. Uh, I do not command the tree friend. The tree friend acts of his own accord. Uh, and let's sort of look over someone's towards Tendril. Someone's reminded me again that it's Matt Lucas, and now it's weird again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don Valley. Yeah. Um, is it homophobic if I kill him? Is that. Do I, uh, do I have to. No, I don't, I don't think so. You can if you'd like to. No. It's not very uh, champion of order, but if it's what you want to do. No, but I feel I feel we're not exactly exemplars of Sigmar at the moment, are we? Um, no, uh, any of us are ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sort of Dendrel's just gonna face towards Rouse, seeing the look on her face as if she's contemplating hurting the guy, and I'm just gonna nod and be like, "Jobby, to hold him still for you." <laughs> Wait, 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 look, look. You've got what you wanted, you... Brazarium's right there. Do what you will with him. Take him back to the Stormcast. That's what you're good for. Lapdogs of the Eternals. Just... Oh, now, this is a really, really interesting situation, because what I'm hearing... What I'm hearing, Harold, is you hurling around insults whilst pinned to the wall by a fucking tree. And here I was thinking you were moderately intelligent. And it seems like you're defying all my odds tonight. A tree that, uh, he is already upset. Can at that moment, Time Master reappears and asks, um, what, Harold, where all of his hair went. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> Answer Harold's, him. What, like, yeah, Harold's the bald one, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Matt Lucas one. <laughs> yeah, he's completely bald. It doesn't have a beard, doesn't have eyebrows. And dwarves usually have all of that. And um... I've been going around the pub, stealing people's drinks without them knowing. Tidemaster, you can't just ask people why they're bold. It's very, very rude. It's, honestly, it's the rudest thing that's happened so far. I find the fact that you asked that more... Just give him more... a harrowing backstory about how he struggled to be cancer. That's Jesus Christ, happening. I can't <laughs> make time to Make Time Master look awful. <laughs> While, while this conversation is happening, what is Namas doing? Um, what is Namas doing? A very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think that she's um, probably next to Presarium and is like... I Finishing don't know, the how, job. How he, <laughs> no, how is he doing? He's trying he is, to make it better. So Presarium, Presarium is pretty tough. And you've yeah. knocked him down, and he is like struggling to get back up. But he's not like he's not like permanently wounded, I'd say. But he's um, like, what? What do you? What do you want? What do you want? I'll, 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 what do you want? I can do it. I'll, I'll give it to you. Whatever. What do you want? I'll, I'll give it to you. I'm imagining legs just like in completely different directions to what they're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not like quite so permanent. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, she, I think she's just trying to, she's kind of got like a hand on his shoulder and is like, just kind of keeping him sat down and is like, be quiet, we'll explain later. She's listening to the, to the conversation between He's Rouse just... and Ham. And Presarium turns to you and says, He's just trying to protect me. He's not, he's not, he's not a bad person. He, he just, he was trying to help me. He, he, he's, 
he is he is an arsehole, but he was he was trying to help. Well, then he was a fool. <laughs> well, what is it you want then? With me? We need your help. We need a guide for the Undercity. Right. What? Why? What, what do you want in the Undercity exactly? We're not too sure. Who is sending you into the Undercity? Um... Okay, this is a pause because both I can't remember who has sent us into the other city, and I'm not sure that we should tell him or not. Um, I didn't write a name down. It's the head of the Gold College, no, I think. No. Oh, Gravewing. There you go. I've written it. Oh yeah. Do you say that though? Do I say that though? Um, it doesn't matter. We'll pay you. Well. It does, it does matter a bit. I mean, I can show you around... I can show you around the undersea, but if I know exactly what you're after, then I don't know how much help I'll be. We're looking for a power source. A power source? Something that would yeah. have currents all throughout the undersea. Hmm. Reckon I could probably help you there, yeah. Yeah, I reckon so. What uh what sort of payment are you offering for this uh expedition? Titties. No, no titties. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even Raz is like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> Time Master didn't say that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 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 I'm so Make it 200, and you've got a deal. 150. 170. Deal. Right, now, can you help me up? Because my leg is aching like a bastard. <laughs> and now it's hot enough. Okay, back to the other side. What's happening? You've just seen... Namus has had this conversation. You've recruited Prosarium for 170 of your drops. Yep. No worries. Uh, Dendrail, who still has this dude pinned high up on the wall, is going to say... You broke the deal. What is it worth to you to keep your life? Harold takes a second. Let, let go of me for a second. Let me think. If you even think of running, you saw what Namus did to your friend. And I and I I, I, I I gently lower him to the floor, but I've still got my hand on his shoulder. And the quivering runs back at my arm. He takes a second, and he looks at all of you. And he says, right. The way I see it, I made an agreement with you, Silverneck. Me and Raz, we're done now. One betrayal for another. But you, I must admit, I have wrong. So, if you let me go, I will owe you a favour. Dendril isn't stupid. He understands the worth of having an underworld contact like this. And he pretends to think about it for a bit. 
he's gonna look over to Raz, see what Raz's reaction is. Uh, Raz is going to look back over, sort of raise her eyebrows and sort of be like, yeah, sounds good. Okay, but then Joe's gonna turn his head back to uh, the Herald. Very well, we have a deal, but I know how much a deal is worth in your mouth. I'll keep an eye on you. Harold says, yeah. No, I'm sure you will. I'm gonna get a drink. And he like hobbles his way back up the stairs, back into the White Lion. Cool. Bye bye, Harold. And uh, Raz blows him a kiss. Then <laughs> <laughs> Dendril's just gonna turn back to the group and be okay. like, these guys weren't very smart. They told us where they'd be hiding and then offered no resistance. I said he would be what? useful, not that he was intelligent. What was their plan here exactly? Well, the plan was for Fazarium to escape <laughs> uh, and they both get out, but actually, everyone rolled really well, so it doesn't seem to have worked out that way. <laughs> So, you now have Presarium, um, and he is leading uh, you through the city. And basically, as he's ducking and weaving, he's saying a couple of different things. He, he's going at quite a good pace, um, but it, he's got that kind of um, that kind of nervous energy, you know, every so, every so slightly twitchy. And he says, look, Sam, here's the thing that you've got to remember about the Undercity, right? Very, very important. It's always changing. Now... Not entirely sure if it's always changing because of the like strange Zeechian magics or because of all of the other stuff that was here beforehand. But here's the important part. You absolutely have to pay attention everywhere you're going. And try not to repeat yourself or go back on yourself too much. That's that's very, very important. Now, I've probably been in the Undercity more than anyone else um, in, in, in Bright Spear. But um, it is quite... A leery place uh, and and a lot of things happen that are quite unexpected so we're gonna have to do it um, in in, uh, in increments as we go through now what I would recommend is we can make a start tonight if you like uh, go if you go away and prepare yourself and then we'll be able to uh, journey in, uh, in in the evening if that's the best thing to do seems to me like doing it in the evening is a good idea because generally speaking there's less uh, of the um, above grounders uh, hiding in there during the evening, so to speak. So uh, if you have any things that you need to prepare, uh, and then you'll be able to meet me at the edge of Old Tavern Road, um, say, just after nightfall. That's probably going to be the best way of doing it. Now, you're probably wondering, what is to stop me from, just say, running away? Well, that is a very valid question that I think you could all ask. I'm going to go to the edge of this, um, uh, uh, the, the edge of the, the, the Undercity, and I will be staying there. Um, and if I move, then, well, you're going to hunt me down and you're going to kill me. So maybe that's the motivation that I need to keep going. It, 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 well, in the system, is there some kind of uh, equivalent of, like, when you see, try and read someone? Yes, there is. Yeah, could you give me a... Insight? No. Uh, Ooh, intuition. Intuition. That's intuition the mind. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, intuition that? mind tech. Um, uh, uh, let me see what presents that for. Let me see what, how you do. Um, yeah, could you give me a uh, a five a five one intuition mind. One success. Okay. So, um. It's it's difficult to get a bead on it because he does have that nervous energy. Um, he he does seem to be being sincere, um, and he does appear to genuinely be afraid of all of you. That tracks. Yeah. That's all that matters today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, actually, have I? Can I say that I haven't given him any um, drops yet, and sure, I'll yeah. give him half of them now mm -hmm. and then say we'll get half of them later cool so that's cool. added cool. insurance sounds good yeah sounds really good 
Excellent. Cool, cool. Well then, if there's no more business, I will go and powder my nose. Okay. Excellent. So, you have a couple of hours left in Bright Spear to uh, prepare yourself for the journey underground. Um, what would you like to do? Um... Raz has a get some sort of snacks, I guess. Some more food. I can get that whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Materialized fish. Um, I'm trying to think what like supplies we'd need, but I really don't know. <laughs> It could be like yeah. like if you want to go like pair something, you're gonna practice some spells or something like that. It doesn't necessarily need to be going going and buying something necessarily. That's it could true. be like what what is your character gonna be doing in the time before sort of preparing for this uh this expedition? Power nap. <laughs> I think the is probably gonna try and find some uh less uh, so less conspicuous clothes because <laughs> I feel like she's probably wearing something still quite fancy and so she's going to find like a robe or something that is quite plain and has a Should hood. we all go robe shopping together? Yeah. Let's all go robe shopping. Dendro's going to need like a <laughs> he's going to need like a curtain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but I'm sure I'm sure the robe the robe can accommodate a haberdasher? Robia? Robia? I'm not sure. Taylor? Ta maybe Taylor? Taylor? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, but Seamstress? They make they make or like yeah, Treamstress? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, so we all go to get matching robes. Okay. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Can we get like a. I'm going to consult my book, because I'm not entirely sure there is a place not, to get matching robes. Nothing is <laughs> less conspicuous or more stealthy <laughs> than four enormous people <laughs> wandering around in matching <laughs> robes. Okay, well, they... she... no, I feel like, no, I feel like absolutely this is what happened. She just mentioned that she was going to go do this, and then Ty Master was like, oh my god. We should get much of robes, and then Ralph was like, "Yes, we should." And then Dendro was just dragged into this. <laughs> um, do we have a team name? And if so, can we get our team name embroidered on the back of the robes, please? Uh, the, so the name that I the name that I put was uh, kind of tongue in cheek, but it doesn't. It was only as a reference thing, but was the binding of the betrayer. Because that is the mm. thing that unifies all of you. Mm. But that yeah. might not be most relevant. It sort of depends. I think we'll just get plain, plain matching robes. <laughs> yep. So. Uh... <laughs> We're gonna, like, hold this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is there a so... robe section? Your journey. I like the idea that <laughs> Dendriel's <back> room. <laughs> Sorry, that's like the idea that Dendriel's robe is just going to be like on him. It's going to look like one of those kids' capes from like a Superman costume you get at like Asda. No, you know what you're going to look like? You're going to look like someone's tried to make a fault. Yeah. Of, like twigs and fabric. I I'm going to look like I've got bunting. Child's <laughs> fault. I just hold one arm out and there's a swing. <laughs> just children running around. So um. I, 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 I really... have a nap and is doing it in the hammock that is now Dendriel. <laughs> I, I really like this game. I really like this game and I really like the writing. I think Cubicle 7 are, are great. And I think a testament to that is the fact that you said, let's all get matching robes. And I have found that on the upper tier, this is the, the Bright Spear City Guide. It's available in all good bookshops. Um, Back in the upper tier, so in the, in the rich part. I'm going to read it, like, verbatim, because I feel like this is very good writing. <clears throat> okay. The Phoenix. Named after the legendary Flamespire Phoenixes of the North, the owner of this store, Tybus Tolleson, likes to make bold claims about his product's ability to produce rebirth of style, fashion, and confidence. His collection of shimmering kafkans, embroidered tunics, and pearl-beaded headscarves defy the cliché of the actions are uncultured, 
and unfashionable. He sells clothing of the highest quality, providing traveling clothes for merchants, richer wear with, <laughs> with which they can impress clients or potential customers, and even tailored options for Duardin, elf and human alike. He'll even claim to make a dinner jacket for a Kurnoth hunter. Customers can acquire fancy dress here if they're looking for a different appearance. Tybus can be encouraged to provide them with cloaks and robes that would allow them to, to blend in with the less fortunate among the new city. Oh How? Literally right there in the book. Holy <laughs> God. <laughs> it wasn't what? a stupid suggestion. Oh. Oh, it was. It no, 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 no. Just, just, just because there's something in the book for it doesn't mean it wasn't a stupid suggestion. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you can go to Tybus, Tybus Tolleson's, um, and and yeah, go go and get kids out. I think as you walk in, it is like an explosion of colour, and I think it is very like New York Fashion Week. Uh, you know, all over the place. There's all sorts of strange stuff, as well as the more kind of. Um, there will be the more traditional, like, action garb and things, but with kind of a very extravagant um, finish. Um, and, oh gosh, I've forgotten his name already. Tollis? What was it? Tollis, that sounds right. Tollis um, says, Why, hello there. How can I help all of you? Ooh, Kronoth, intriguing. We may be able to do something with this. What are you looking for today? Robes. Rose. I yes. don't know what I'm doing here. Mm. In a way, is that not the case with all of us, perhaps? No, let me have a look. What sort of robes are you looking for in particular? Are you looking for something functional? Something for a ball? Something uh, to, to impress? Something to to um, make yourself invisible? What is it in particular that you're looking for? What kind of cut? What kind of ream? What kind of material would you be interested in? Well, as much as I usually strive for flamboyance, I think today we're looking for something slightly more inconspicuous. Yeah, mm. very much so. Inconspicuous and work hardy. You know, the the, 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 the the very spirit of the action frontier. Yes. No, I think we can probably probably do something with that. Um, intriguing. Yes. And um, my the um, the 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 tall gentleman. He's a uh, Quite a specimen, isn't he? So, so, what is it you're looking for, um, um, my friend? An excuse to live. An excuse to live. Yes, I would agree. Fashion is my excuse to live as well. I'm yes, very happy that. that you're able to. But can I, can I make some, some minor suggestions? I believe there's a, there, there are, there are certain ways that we can we can work with this and 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 make it palatable yes no and he goes to the side he gets a big tape measure and a pair of scissors and says yes well we have much to do let us get to work please do not prune my foliage oh no no certainly not no 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 definitely not no no um although can you breathe in just uh, do you breathe you do breathe breathe in a little bit just 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 around 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 the, the bicep there yes that would be splendid <laughs> So, you are here, you're getting outfits. I want you all to describe to me what your outfits are going to look like. Oh, sweet Jesus. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, or if you don't have ideas, then we can kind of just work it out. I, I feel like for, um, uh, in terms of dendrils, I think it really would be very minimalist. Mm. I think it's probably like like a, a tabard or something like that, but like very, very small you know present very subtle um but still makes it look kind of cool my reference i'm thinking is this is a very toasty reference oh, here we go. Do, you, do you remember the do you remember the high ordinators from uh mournhold in in elder scrolls Morrowind? <laughs> oh ordinators. yes yeah you know they've got kind of like flowy bits haven't they mm. i think it's probably quite like that not enough that it would get in your way yeah you know? The only thing that had me concerned about this is the fact that my quiverling spends most of his time running around in my moss. <laughs> I, I, I don't want him to like get trapped <laughs> when I need no, him. I think, I think uh... a quiverling pocket. <laughs> I think that it would be have a little cape of his own. Actually, that would be cute. Yeah. 
tiny, tiny, tiny coat with maybe like an off top and some fabric. Please. <laughs> Actually, you know what? He's getting a bow tie. <laughs> Matching bow tie. Boom. Boom. So Gendriel is getting dolled up. Um, I believe for... Uh, let me have a look at what it says. Whilst you're... Fine clothes. Oh. I say whilst you're looking, yeah. just Dendriel does not look at all comfortable throughout any of this. <laughs> no, but I think I think at the end of it, Dendriel pretty, looks pretty badass. You know, I think it's a, it's a good look. Um, it basically it's going to be thirty drops for everyone. Okay. Regardless of, of what it is. Um. So what is what is Namus's outfit? Um. I think that it's like. Um, kind of like a robe, like a long robe, but like built into a kind of jumpsuit type thing as well. So like not a dress, like it's trousers. And it's uh, like dark, kind of quite heavy fabric um, with a big hood um, and like quite long sleeves as well, but very practical too. And it's, mm -hmm. there's nothing like flashy, there's no flashy colours, it's just like a dark, heavy fabric, I think, but it's got nice little embroidery around the cuffs and stuff. Excellent. I like that. I like that a lot. That sounds really good. Um, and I think, how, how does Namus feel about this experience, the sort of tailoring experience? Um, I think it's been quite a while since she's had anyone sort of tailor her or like dress her but that is something that has definitely happened in her past mm -hmm. so i think that she is definitely relishing the experience of it excellent excellent cool uh raz what's raz's robe looking like uh am i allowed to show a picture or is that not is that not gonna fly well with twitch slash copyright uh, maybe if you share it in the Discord, and then we could see it. Oh, I would have to get my Pinterest. I've got it on my phone, so... Oh, wait, no, I can still, I can still do that. Uh... While you're doing that, we could go up to Tidebuster. Yeah. Okay, so... Robe. Dark blue on the outside. A hood. Like, a quite a large hood. Um, a rounded, large hood. And then, inside... It's all like sparkly blue, loads of different colours. It's got those like ruffles. It's just madness. It's very flamboyant. But as soon as you just, as soon as you button it up, it's just dark blue. I like it. I like it. Kind of like two different, two different sides of a stormy sea. Yeah, no, yes. that's very good. <laughs> Exactly, really and cool. it doesn't look. I mean, the way that I described it sounds really kitsch and tacky. It's not. It's cool. <laughs> oh it yeah, no, like... for sure. Obviously, obviously, it's all cool. Um, I hope you're all making notes about this, by the way, because I'm not. And if at a oh, time, I am. Don't worry. Get, if, if we want to get character art, this would be very cool to have this included <laughs> in it at some point. Um, uh, excellent, Raz. So what you've sent through is kind of like a, like a buccaneer's long coat. That's basically it, yeah, with lots of, like, gold buttons and trimmings a a around the kind of uh, centre part and along the sleeves. Um, it's very powerful. It's very... Uh, it's, it's very nice. Uh, it's, 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 it's probably quite a thick fabric, I think, mm -hmm. um, with, like, a... With like a, a nice sort of upturned collar uh and and sort of flashy collar that comes kind of down uh down the kind of torso um yeah but it's got a split like it's got like a tail split in the middle yeah 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 fantastic well you are now all fully kitted up um the owner of the shop is incredibly happy with the the, the lineup that he has there um and uh the evening has now descended so the time has come for you to make your way to meet presarium is that where you'd like to go i think so nah no nah, just time master just is oh, done, is done. <laughs> yeah he's got his robes he's done for the day <laughs> 
You haven't had your good sleep yet. So. Oh, yeah. No, I I I, na I napped in in a hammock on Dendril. Oh, okay. Yeah. On the way to the shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have enough money for all this? Because we had to pay that dude as well. I. Uh... I also don't necessarily think we have to pay that dude. Like, we basically had him, like, at gunpoint. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, you uh, find your way back to Presarium. Uh, the guide is waiting outside a partially collapsed stone house, walking through a doorway when you arrive. He leads you to a stair that descends into a basement, and from there into a ladder into a sub-basement. Heavy doors in the small room open to reveal a staircase going down for 50 feet or more, reaching a large platform that intersects with a subterranean tunnel. Presarium ignores this tunnel and turns away, finding another wide platform. The stairway descends even more, and after another hundred steps, you reach a huge, huge arched opening. This one has what appears to be a strong vault door. But this vault door is bent open, as though something from beneath has pushed outwards and broke it free. Presarium holds up his hand, quiet, turns to you and says, Once we go through this gate, we're in the Undercity. Any last words? And that's uh, where we'll end for tonight. Uh, oh. <laughs> Can I do Christ. the last words before we clock off? Can I do what Raz is yeah, 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 what's the last yes. words? Last words. Uh, so it's all kind of a serious tone. And Raz says, uh, what's the difference between a casual work party and a pirate orgy? One, you come as you are. The other, you are as you come. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Can Time Master just look over and be like, God, that was awful. <laughs> uh, and the best like the idea that Ross has been bit. saving that. Before yeah. before we do close the what's Presarium's response to that? <laughs> oh, uh, I I think I think he's still a bit terrified of you, so it's very threatening. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sweet I would Jesus! Like to, to state to the floor that I have been sitting on that for this whole session, waiting yes. for the right time. <laughs> no, I have I have absolutely no difficulty. Imagine you googling that joke, Emma. That's yeah. so, that's so <laughs> you have a list of these, Emma. I think it's gonna be um, more my, of these. My internet history is just pirate sex jokes. Um, don't <laughs> look any further than that. <laughs> well, oh my God. Uh, anyway. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our first uh, delve into uh, Faltering Light. We obviously have not finished it. I think the plan at the moment is we're going to do another stream in two weeks' time, uh, where we'll be catching up with the same with the same story and, and keeping it going. Um, I suppose maybe once more around the room, uh, like where people can find you if they're interested. Uh, so I'm uh, Rock and Roll on Twitter. I write lots of RPG stuff, including some D and D um, and uh, and other bits and pieces as well. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, all my stuff that you need to know about me is on my Twitch page. And cool. I am the... No, I'm not the same on Twitch anymore. I changed my handle. I'm Turkey Silver on Twitter. But yeah, that's everything about me. Awesome. Sophie. Sophie. Uh, I'm on Twitter at SopB, I think with three E's. Um, I tweet about politics. And um, oh yeah, I do that as well. <laughs> accessibility stuff and the, all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, find me there. Fantastic, uh, Emma. Uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, Emma Underwood five one seven, or you can go to my website www.emmaunderwood.com 
if you want to hire me to do uh, diversity and inclusion work or like trans stuff. I'm not sure if this is the audience for that, but it's there. <laughs> Why not? Why not? And Ariana? Hi, I'm Ariana, and I now have three friends on PlayStation Network. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you also do, do you also do like rock music, right? Metal music. <laughs> yeah, I'm a metal cellist, but it's really difficult to spell. My Toki, can you put it in the Twitch chat? What my Instagram is? Yeah, yeah I'll find it for you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, oh yeah, if you want thing. leather work or drinking horns or engraving, heathencrafts.com. Yeah, that's me done. Woo! Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again in two weeks' time. Yes! Woo! Bye, everyone! Bye! Bye! Bye.